Good morning. And uh, I first want to thank the organizer uh, for inviting me to give this talk on a topic, one of my favorite topics. But uh, first I would uh, like to say that I ask organizers to introduce me because I'm from the Department of Evolutionary Biology as a colleague from the Department of Atsa Urošević. I think it's the best recommendation <laughs> in this group after yesterday. Uh, I think it would be the best thing from PR reasons, but nevertheless. And there is uh, one, I think you will see why I like this topic, flower color polymorphism in Iris pumila. But there is other reason why it's, uh, I think it's interesting right now, because uh, we got a grant project from our science fund for continuation of our uh, studies. And uh, it's good because uh, it allows us to expand uh, our research and to add some additional advanced uh, techniques. And uh, I'm very pleased that we got it for, uh, for uh, basic research, which is uh, possible to do. And the whole team is from our department, so I will introduce our team. Uh, um, most members are here now. Daniela Milković is a project leader, uh, Stevan Avramov, uh, Natasha Barisic, Klisaric, and myself, and uh, Uroš Živković is also participating. But the main participant of this project is, of course, dwarf bearded Iris, Iris Pumila. And I will now show you why. Uh, Uh, sorry. Uh, why not? The uh, movie is not playing. It I was. Play. Yes, but it, it played yesterday. Yeah? Okay, thank you. Uh, because uh, it's the uh, uh, third day of our workshop. It's uh, We are waiting coffee break. We had a gala dinner yesterday, so I uh, thought I uh, will make this presentation a little bit lighter with uh, uh, movie clips because we prepared them from uh, TV Vojvodina, no, uh, from Novi Sad. They are uh, having a cycle of uh, uh, TV shows uh, of uh, uh, programs that are financed on Prisma. It's our material, but it's prepared for them, so it will be, I think, nicer to look at the clips instead just on me or, or some uh, graphics. And I think you can see why this is my favorite topic. It's, uh, I can't uh, get tired of watching uh, these Kumila flowers. They are very beautiful. And they are polymorphic in color. You have different colors, different shapes. It's a hermaphroditic uh, uh, flower, so it can be used as a donor or recipient of pollen. You can use it as a male or female. We can make reproduct re reproductive decisions for them. In plants, you can do that in most of the species. In some other groups, you can't like mammals, but uh, it's uh, also clonal. So you can get uh, replicas of the same genotypes very easily. And it uh, forms that uh, circle-shaped clones. So it's easily identified. And we are working on this species uh, from 80s. It was chosen by our colleague uh, Branka Tucic and by late academician Vladimir Stevanovic. Uh, so we can say it's the second millennium of the research of, the, of this object. And as you can see, it's the same population with clones of different colors. Uh, we now have uh, two groups working on this uh, species. One is ours, other, other one is also in our department. 
And uh, there are several components of our research, uh, present research. One is population dynamics. It started earlier, 11 years ago. It uh, is a continuation of the things that were done on this species previously. Uh, what uh, what we did with oh it's now it's working uh, we selected the, we were working in Delhi Plateau Sand it's a good thing that it's very close to Belgrade it's 40 kilometers from uh, Belgrade but it's a, a special reserve of uh, nature it's protected and you need a four wheeler to get to the spots which is good because to protect something in Serbia, I think it, uh, the best thing is uh, that you cannot get there very easily because if you can, it can be a, a problem. Uh, previously, uh, we didn't have all equipment that we have now, so it was limited to the peak, uh, flowering peak. Now we are using this type of grids uh, in the, we place it in the same place every year. It's uh, 12 by 12 meters and we have 25 grids of that size and 10 smaller grids, it's 7 by 7 meters because in some places you cannot place the large one but it's totally 4,000 square meters that are covered with uh, iris flowers, so it's a really large sample. And uh, if you ask how we can cover that at all, because we are covering it from the start of flowering season, that's the answer. We are using drone and it uh, uh, speed the process uh, from five to ten times, depending on what kind of uh, approach you're comparing it, it with. It was the hardest part in getting uh, uh, our uh, project because for use of the drone we had to make uh, special uh, management, monitoring and the mitigation plan of impact on uh, environment and society. I think they will use it. No, it's document, 30 page document. It's, uh, I think it took a lot to uh, prepare. Uh, because you know drones are used in various <laughs> uh, we we and you can see uh, we get very good uh, pictures of uh, uh, iris it's not for exhibition but it's uh, it can be used for our purposes to identify flowers we also m uh, obtained pilot <coughs> license for this uh, we registered the drone and as you can see, uh, I think we mastered the use of the drones. You will now see our, our landing of the drone. It was a quite precise thing on an exact spot. I was joking with Stevan that now we had the, that license. We, we will be drafted in the army because in <laughs> modern warfare, unfortunately, it's the... But we have license only for this small type and uh, only in Delhi Blato Sand, but uh, that's one big step ahead because we can now cover uh, very large samples and we can cover it from the beginning of flower seasons to end. It's uh, usually a month, it's not uh, that uh, large season, but before we uh, were stuck with small samples, or with the only peak of flower and season, which is uh, uh, it's a trouble if you use only that information. Regarding color, for the uh, last maybe six, seven years, we are using <coughs> UV, uh, VIC uh, reflecting uh, spectroscopy, uh, which uh, means that we can measure colors in field but we are using it, this is a portable thing and you can bring it to Delhi Blato Sand, but we are mostly doing it in our institute once. Again, it's samples that we collected. I, I think it's always nice to see a couple of more slides of uh, different uh, colors of our 
object. And uh, because in uh, literature, mostly published in, uh, <coughs> in, uh, from our institute from the last 40 years, uh, there you can find different uh, classes, different number of different colors. It goes to nine, from three to nine. It's, and uh, we are trying to give some uh, physical meaning to, to really test what you have, what spectrum do you have, because we can be very subjective when we estimate colors. And uh, the first thing that we did, we uh, got this uh, uh, spectra, and it's giving us uh, other problem is because uh, uh, spectra depends on a uh, quality of light that is, uh, it's not the same spectra in the morning or in the evening. So it's uh, this uh, spectrophotometer has a, a xenon uh, lamp, and it's uh, the same pulse and same uh, for every fl flower. It's closed system, that's uh, how it's, it's working. So we get a clear difference between uh, main colors, else, of course, uh, different uh, intensity, also have different spectra. But when you go to the one color and different shades, then it's, uh, you know, it's a mess. It's, a, it's not a mess, uh, but it's, uh, it's uh, uh, quantitative differences, it's continuous, it's, you don't have separated different groups like we did before when we are estimating it by our human vision. And with that physical data, you can go further, you can uh, transfer it to the uh, human vision. But uh, what is most important, because it's entomophilus plant, it's a flower and it's pollinated mostly by, uh, by bumblebees. Insects see colors different than we. They can see part of UV spectra. So because we have that type of uh, probe, UV, uh, we can also show it in a space that corresponds to insect vision. So uh, our first main finding is that is continuous. That, that we see different shades and name it differently. It uh, corresponds to continuous variability, but there is no physically separated classes. And now we are going further uh, uh, comparing uh, human vision and the insect vision regarding actual plants that are taken from nature. Also, when we speak about colors, very important thing is uh, biochemical basis. So what are the compounds that are present in flowers that give that pigmentation? And uh, we, uh, you had the pro poster last night in the section. Uh, that part is covered by Natasha. And uh, it's uh, just in the beginning. This is a part of our research. Uh, uh, that uh, could not be done. Of course, we started some testing, but without additional funding from our science fund, this will be too costly to perform. That's the first thing. Second thing, I think this uh, shows that it's very important that not only that you have a team, but that you are working in a large and diversified scientific institution. It will be impossible without the equipment that we have in our institute and without help of our colleagues from different other departments. Because, OK, it's, everything belongs to our institute, but the drone and the portable spectrophotometer is something that we obtained for our research. Uh, HPLC, it's institutional. And it's done with the our help of our colleagues from the Department of Plant uh, Physiology, Uros uh, Gašić and uh, Liljana Tubić. This is a procedure. It's for television, so it's a little bit, you know, they, they like to see the equipment. It's uh, 
uh, plant physiology department. Yes. Yes, so it's done in a different department and we are really very lucky that we are working in an institution that have all different uh, di directions of con contemporary biology. Well, you can always send it to some other lab to pay for that, but it's totally different when you can learn the technique from your colleagues and with the help of your colleagues. Well, it's a, a different uh, procedure. It's, uh, we are at the very beginning. It's uh, complicated. I think it's more than 50 compounds that 65. we 55 compounds. 65. 65. Oh, it's <laughs> <laughs> new information. And uh, uh, also, there is additional techniques. There is uh, uh, spectrophotometry because for carotenoids this system didn't work so mm -hmm. we expanded it's not even mentioned in our project proposal but of course we can adapt because we have different types of equipment in our institution and finally uh, microsatellites genetic analysis well this is uh, this is also advanced, it's sequenator. In project proposal, we uh, asked for money to do it in other institutions, but uh, now we have it on our inst institute. It's institutional, but it's department but it started in Delibrato Set. The same uh, plants that we are selected for color analysis are used for genetic analysis. And uh, you, we use leaves, which is good. Uh, you can do it after flowering season. So at least part of your work can be separated because we are really overwhelmed during the flowering seasons. Well, it's, it's for TV because uh, TV guys like uh, equipment with moving parts. It's very <laughs> good on, on screen. So it, uh, it's a little bit complicated. It's not for for you, but it's uh, good. To, it's shaking, and, you know, it's, uh, <laughs> so I apologize for that type of deviation <laughs> for general public. But it's really uh, nice to see what we are doing. It's of course uh, uh, also a department of, of uh, uh, plant uh, physiology. So PCI, uh, uh, sequenator is on, uh, in department of genetics. Uh, PCR is uh, department of plant physiology. And now I can mention other colleagues. So I think Tiana Banyanac is here. Of course, Bane Branislav Schiller contributed. And now I think B so Biljana is here, Filipovic. So we really have a, uh, with a little help of uh, our friends as <laughs> Beatles was were singing uh, it's uh, extremely important uh, to have a support of uh, your institution of course there is a possibilities to do it in other institutions but of course it's it is much better oh again moving parts it's for <laughs> TV. <laughs> and uh, what we uh, it's also in the beginning we were not able to do it uh, before and uh, the first results uh, show that we have chosen very good primers very good separation we tested on the material that we know that are genetically different and it's separated clearly yes we, we are we are near the end it's, uh, <laughs> okay, maybe I can skip it a little bit if Stella agrees it's your part. <laughs> yeah, it's the last. This is a table with different variants. There was an issue about microsatellites, but uh, because uh, one of the questions from uh, reviewers of our project proposal, why we use macro satellites, there are more advanced techniques. This is the most cost effective for our needs because uh, Iris Pumila is allotetraploid. 
it's too complicated to analyze it uh, uh, usually as uh, you analyze popul in population genetics. But it's advantage if you want to identify if two plants that are very close are different. So in fact, it's the best method. And with MacMicro satellite, we can use uh, with the same resources to cover more samples. So it, in fact, it was this is a preliminary findings. Uh, what we know from population study that uh, there is a variation between different years and the number is declining significantly of flowers. So I ho just hope that by the end of the project, official <laughs> anatom of our project will not be that famous song, where have all flowers gone? Uh, but uh, we also planned for that uh, eventuality because samples are so large that for our purposes, and we had put it in our risk management plan, even if it's not successful flowering, we have it three seasons and we'll have enough. Uh, and also interesting finding is that it's uh, mostly result of Iris pumila possibility to switch between, between different modes of reproduction because uh, there is a, a decline in a percentage of flowering ramets. It's uh, uh, different parts of the same cone, but the number of ramets are not that uh, declined in that uh, uh, amount. It's, uh, I think we found that approximately 60% of ramets that we have 11 years ago. But number of flowers is re reduced to uh, five to ten percent of what we have eleven years ago, and there is still not only ramets, but it's uh, you have rhizomes. So underground situation is unknown to us, and you have a seed bank if you looking uh, at the great picture. Uh, regarding uh, spectra, I mentioned that it's continuous. Uh, regarding L, uh, HAP, L, 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 H, LPC, we are okay. <laughs> uh, and I also mentioned uh, that in genetics we have a good system for separation and it will produce good results. Sorry for taking your time. And this is it. I don't know if you have time for questions or. <laughs> Maybe a question on the, on the coffee break, so... In smoking part of the... <laughs> <laughs> uh, when, when we start again...